Good morning. It's cloudier today than it has been. That's not good for bean harvest, but we'll see. Uh, in the backhoe this morning, I'm hauling a little bit of stone down. Uh, I assume, based on what they've told me, that they're going to bring my propane tank to me today, and I'm going to put a little stone pad out where uh, I want them to put it. Otherwise, I mean, they're just going to set it on concrete blocks, and I would like it to be stone around it. It'd be nice, so I'm doing that. scooped up a little mud when I was scooping stone and got it in there, but it'll be all right. That'll work. Uh, we got all kinds of lifts and trailers showing up here. I think they're going to do gutters, downspouts today. Phil's back with the first uh, truck. He's going to go unload the green cart that's full over there. I started the other truck up. I might haul that one in. I think I got time to go and do that here this morning. Phil's over there. Next in line to get dumped. Dumping. It's nice here. I don't even have to get out of the truck. They do it all for you. Sometimes I do get out and talk, but it's cold today. I think they're drying corner beans today. That first load Phil brought in was 17 and a half, so the combine was reading a little dry. 17 and a half is a little wet. Well, those, those were the first ones we combined, so it'll be interesting to see what his last one was and what um, my load that I'm dumping right now is. Guess what? My propane tank is here. They're gonna they're gonna get it set over there. I got a little bit of work to do where my water line goes into the house up here. I got some pieces, I'll show you in a second. So I've been contemplating how to seal up this opening here where that uh, water line goes in there. And I uh, talked to my builder and he said they glue in a piece of two inch PVC and then put a fern coat on there, clamp it down. So I got one, it just came this morning. That's why I haven't backfilled this. Now we gotta pull this out, cut a piece, stick that on there and then stick it back through. Okay, well, there's that piece glued in. I'm gonna shove my water line back in through that and then we'll tighten our clamps down and um, that'll be nice and watertight. I do have a can of spray foam. We'll fill in the inner pipe from the inside, um, but this will at least keep the water out. Tank, line, the tracer tape, which, It'll be super convenient if I ever need to find my water line because, yeah, you can just trace the tape. So, we got to do a little backfill in here. I already got the backhoe down. I dumped some stone along the um, house trying to cover that up and bury it and build it up. And I did throw a piece of uh, foam insulation right above where the water line goes into the house just for a little extra frost prevention where it's going to be mostly stone or not as much dirt in there. Um, so, if I can get that tape down in the hole a little better we'll uh, be good to go here well I got most of the trench backfilled I got some stuff to do by the house yet but the other trench that I dug for the electric over here is super soft and so trying to push across it is a little bit difficult and those guys are working up there so we're just gonna leave it for now I'd like to get a little bit more stone uh, along the house there so it's fine for now all right that is done for now what I needed to do we got propane, which means we can get heat in our house real quick. Um, they gotta come fill the tanks, so it'll maybe be next week, but at least it's all hooked up and they can, um, they gotta prime the radiant floor heat system, get that uh, all filled up, and then we can turn it on and have some heat, which will be fantastic. So that's the tentative plan here for now. Um, uh, I'm going to get something to eat. It's almost lunchtime. I think Dad's out looking at fields, trying to figure out uh, where we should and can go. Uh, so we'll start moving once we get back. I wish the sun was shining. Our beans are going to be wet. I don't know that we care. We have a plan. We have a very good plan. And we have just a little sunshine here. Oh, this is shaping up to be a good day. So um, Dad has looked at all of the bean fields that we have remaining to, to combine up here. He says, all of them are fine. They will go. We can get across them, which means let's go. Um, whether the beans are dry or not at this point is still questionable, but it's the 4th of November and it doesn't matter. We're just going to get them combined because we can. So um, we're going to get the combine empty here, drop the head, head to the next field we've got of double crop beans, which is just down here around the corner. Um, we're going to run those off first because there's about 30 acres. It'll take an hour and a half. They'll probably be a little wet, but it'll give time for everything else to dry a little bit 
And uh, then we're going to go, we've got two fields over that way that have, um, that are, are first crop beans. It's going to be a little tricky getting trucks out, but if we can get across them, we can get across them. We should get all that stuff done today. That'd be like 130 acres. That'd be a good day. We're back. Combine and beans. So these ones, um, these are double crop beans again. And uh, for, for those of you that don't know, uh, double crop beans are basically beans that we planted after we harvested the wheat crop out of here. So you can still see all the wheat stubble uh, down there. And we're running a lot of material in through the combine because we're cutting it off really low now. But um, we planted, the, this field was planted, I believe, on the 10th of July. It was right before it started raining. They were out here bailing on that side of the field while I was over here planting on this side, uh, pushing it late one night, trying to get the beans planted, get the straw baled before it started raining. We had a, I don't know, two and a half, three inch rain the next day or that night after we got these in. Um, so this was, these were late. I don't expect them to be as good. Um, but we'll see. So right now the combine says they're mid thirties. I'll take that. What's our average? Uh, 24, but I did a lot of ends that were not good. So they may be, they may be in the 30 bushel range, 25, 30, which is, is still good. We'll take that. They are wet. It says 17, three, but the combine was a point or two dry yesterday. Cause yesterday when I started, it said they were around 16 and the first load we hauled in was 18 and the last load was 16. So uh, they may be wetter than that, 16, 7, but like I said, they're double crop beans. It's the 4th of November. We don't care. The weather is good. We've got sunshine now. The skies have cleared, so they'll dry out throughout the day. We didn't have any sun yesterday afternoon, so that's why they stayed wet. Um, and we're going to we're gonna do these low-yielding double crop beans before we move into some of our higher-yielding first crop beans or what the normal beans, and hopefully those will be drier and uh, we'll make some progress here. When I turned the uh, bean slid and hit that buzzer to tell me the grain tank is full, it's clearly not full yet. Look, this window is covered. But that one is not. But my camera came on, and now I can see it. So I can watch and see when it gets up to there, it's full. Well, when you don't have to stop and dump very often, uh, you can cover some ground in a hurry. So it says they're averaging around 33, which is just decent double crop beans. They're still sort of wet, 16, 8, it says right now. They're not drying very fast, but they will. They'll dry. Not these, because these will be out of mine. The next ones, they'll dry. Um, anyway, we're, we're, we don't have a ton more to do here. Uh, it will be nice to get into some good beans and try this head in some first crop beans that are not short, that doesn't have all the wheat straw in there. That'll that'll go smoother. Well, not that this is bad. It's just I want to I want to have some fun and do some good beans. You see that parking the truck in the field? That's called tempting fate right there. Moving, ready to go. Field behind us. We got to wait for the traffic to clear so we can pull out onto the road and get turned around. Head into the driveway the right way. Okay, here we go. Hurry up, hurry up. Don't run over the mailbox behind us. Let's go. We seem to have a bit of a water problem in this general area. We might have to leave a few beans. Of course, from what I see in the farmers from Minnesota on Instagram, uh, you just say, yeah, get them, go, drive right through it. I we don't do that. Not here. Nope. I was really hoping my neighbor would be over here combining beans today too. But he's not. He's the guy that bought the X9. That'll be in that field. Would have been fun to run side by side for a little bit, wouldn't it? So, here we've got some lodged beans. They're laying sideways. This is where that flip over reel should shine. And you can see it's... Um, kind of grabs them and throws them around. It's definitely not as gentle as um, the old reel on the old head, but it does seem to eject them off of it and so they don't stick and keep going around and around and getting all wrapped up. 
which is nice, but there are going to be beans flying everywhere. All right, well, I got most of the end rows done. I got some to do back over there yet, but we're uh, starting to make some progress. These beans are much better than the double crops, as they should be and as they look and, you know, you expect. I don't know that they're 60 bushel. We seem to be 8 to 10 points high or uh, percent high, although I put a correction in the yield monitor. Let me check. Let's see, if I hit this button, and then this button, and then touch here, uh, this is the active yield screen. It says it's got 63 accepted samples. It's collecting one right now. It seems to be working. Um, but right here, oh, I put a correction in of negative 8%. So whatever it's telling it, it's taken 8% off of that. And we're still showing 70 bushel right in here. So that's really good if it's accurate. It's close. It's got to be close. Um... So yeah, for 60 bushel beans, that's fantastic. They are wet, like I said, here it says 15.3, average for the field, 16.1. Um, that was reading a point or two wet or dry yesterday, so they're a little wetter than that. So ideally we want soybeans to be 13%. Uh, and if you watched my videos back in September when we were combining some soybeans, I went through some calculations and talked about why having two dry of soybeans is worse than having two wet of soybeans. And that is true to an extent. There is a limit to that, um, but basically, if you're combining 10% soybeans, it's basically costing you the same amount in lost yield as the moisture and drying charge would cost for harvesting 19% soybeans. So really, we're not that bad. Uh, if we were gonna put these in the bin, they would need to be dried. We are not putting them in the bin. Somebody is, it's not us. Uh, so we're gonna haul them into the elevator. They'll run them through their dryer. They're charging us for it. I think they charged us 30 cents, 25, 30 cents a bushel, something like that on the ones we combined yesterday. So yeah, it, it hurts. I would rather them be dry, but it's November. It's more important to get them out of the field than to wait for them to dry right now. So that's what we're doing. It'll be fine. We're gonna keep moving. Let's get them. All right, well, there goes dad. He came and got the cart unloaded for me. Um, it's it's not a great situation right now where we can't bring trucks into the field here um so he just kind of parked as close to off the side of the road as he could and reached over the ditch with the cart and uh got it loaded the idea is to have the cart loaded when the truck comes so that we just have to unload it and go and we're not blocking the road for very long um it's the best we can do right now i mean we're not blocking the whole road people can still get by the problem is we're right on this curve and it's not a great spot but we just don't have any other choice right now that camera helps you see the beans before they come flying out the edge of the green tank. She's full. Well, we've got some more end rows along these trees here. This will be the pass. If we're going to get stuck, it's going to be here. Um, yeah, you guys remember what's up here in this corner, right? Good beans on this field. That's after I put that correction in for the yield correction, 8%. Uh, minus 8%, so uh, yeah, there's 60 plus bushel beans, that's that's awesome. Yeah, there it is. No uh, ducks or geese? No, no ducks and geese today. We're gonna, we're gonna stay out of that water though. slide down this hill it's not too bad I do have the uh, four-wheel drive preemptively engaged oh here we're sliding <laughs> somebody's gonna ask me if we're gonna come back for those beans I left over there we're not there's not enough of them there to worry about and you're not really supposed to harvest flooded flooded grain. Grain that has been under flood waters is not really um, allowed to be sold. So, nope, those ones stay. I finished that field. We're going to the one right up here. I'm going to try real hard to get there with the head on. The cart's sitting right here. We can drop it if we need to. Uh, we can dive into these corn stalks here, but it's just getting between those houses, and I'm going to try it because it saves a ton of time if I can. We made it. We made it. We made it. I gotta get my 
Green tank covers reopened. Dive into the field here. All right, uh, we're moved into this other field. I had to go run and take care of some stuff, so Dad jumped in the combine for me. Looks like we got a mud hole over there. We're gonna we're gonna tear stuff up here a little bit more than on that other field, I think. Uh, this is some pretty nasty stuff he's in right here. It's a it's a muck. It's the muck pocket that we don't like being in when it's dry or wet with anything heavy, the sprayer, but you gotta, you gotta do it. So we, we're doing it. So uh, trucks are on the road here. We're on a little bit more of a side road, dirt road, so we can park on the road there and not worry about it too much. There was right around 50 acres here. Um, we'll get this done tonight, I think, pretty easily, but as long as the ground conditions are uh, allow it. Oh yeah. You guys wanted me to tell you when we get to the field that we sprayed with the drone, this is it. And you can see what happens here, all these giant ragweeds, where we did not spray because of the electric lines. That's what we get. So, he already combined most of what we sprayed, but uh, they were much cleaner out there. Electric poles, no fun. We're gonna jump in here. Now the sun's gonna come out. Now when I need to be able to see and I can't, that's all right. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, anyway, we're back in the combine. Dad's gonna run the cart a little bit. I don't think we're gonna unload on the go. He's just gonna move it from the end of the field where we're at to the trucks and keep it a little lighter. Um, from here to those trees, that's what we've got to do. We'll see how it goes. There's some, there's some wet holes out here. It's gonna be iffy. Yep, iffy. That's what I said. Iffy. Crap. It's, uh, it's greasy out here. Oh, man. I think I'm gonna slide down this hill. I think I'm gonna slide down this hill. Well that that was that was an adventure over there. We're I'm gonna try this next pass. Oh my goodness. I know you can't see it because of this sun. I'll try and get a picture from the other angle. But that's I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't have a choice right now. We've got to get these beans out. supposed to crab walk it like this. I, I don't know how well the camera picks up what we're doing right now. <sighs> all right, all right, down the hill should be better. What a mess. I'm not sure I'm gonna make it up here to get these if I wanted to. Uh, close enough. The good news is there's a bottom to it. It's only slimy the top three or four inches. The bad news is we're doing that. Huh. All right, so over there, there's a little ditch, right? We're on the other side of it. I did these end rows the last time we were in this field two weeks ago. This is the field we were in when we got rained out. 
I don't want to turn through there, so we're going to try and come out through the field here a little bit farther, but that last spot was too soft. This is muck. Once you start sinking, you're screwed. Nope, we're nope out of here. Eh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Over there, it was bad. I do not know if this is going to work or not. Because there's a lot of spots, a couple of spots here I've already had to back out of. And, uh, over there, it was wet. It was, it, yeah, see the water? See the water? How far do we tempt it? About that far. Let me back out, and we're spinning, and we're making big old ruts. And no good. I don't like it. I don't like it. So the question here is, um, do we get what we can, mud the heck out of this field, come back later to try and get the few spots that we won't get, or do we pull out now, head to Berkey tomorrow? We got another uh, about 90, 95 acres to do here at Waldron, and uh, that's it after this field. Basically, we got another field of double crop beans, but I'm not worried about those. And then I wouldn't have to worry about it if it rains in a week. We would have the beans pretty well done. If we can keep going and do those tomorrow. That's, that's still the plan, but it might change yet. That light, still cool, even today. We are, uh, we're still still going here. Um, at a, a spot right over there that you can't see that I had to uh, go around. Let's pull up the map here. Uh, that's not a very good map, but we've done all this over here. Uh, that spot there that we had to go around over here is where it was super muddy. So this pink and purple and brown stuff in the middle is all we've got left to get over there to the trees. So we're going to try it and see what we can do. <clears throat> get as much of it as we can anyway, I guess. It is so sort of weird here because I'm on the top of a hill and I'm sliding all over the place. But then I come down here into this bottom where there's hardly any beans because there's been so much water and they've just drowned it out over the course of the summer. It was stunning them. And it's perfectly solid down here, like n hardly making a track through it. No issues whatsoever. But then you get back up on the top and whoosh, we're sliding all over the place again. It's kind of weird. We're getting closer, but we're still drifting. Wish you guys could feel it like I can feel it see the tracks over there kind of it's just like all of a sudden we're going straight we're going straight up oh, we're sideways follow that center row where that row is on the center it should not be moving like that it should be in the same row spacing all the way across the field not drifting that's the rear tire sliding and hunting to keep us on the auto steer line Then we get into some stuff that's a little thick, maybe laying down, pushes the power meter way up to the top. We made it through. And it levels off for a while till we get to the top of the next hill. It, it got worse. It got worse. I found a bad spot. Oh, let's see if we can go around it. I somehow doubt it. Oh, ooh, that worked. Wow, I'm surprised. Uh, maybe. Still sliding. <sighs> Takes a lot of power to spin the tires on a combine. Who would have thought? <sighs> We're by the trees now, that's why. It's, it's wet over here. Here we go again. Keep her moving. Our tires are gonna have so much mud on them by the time we leave this field. Oh, it's gonna be bad. I just hope they're not tech packed full of mud between the duels. So I know I'm going to leave a few here. My goal is to not leave enough that I have to come back. Holy cow. Look at that. Can you see? Look at the way the road. We're driving that way. Look at the angle. This is nuts. You catch it? There we go. Wow. Oh, we made it. Finally. Finally. 
So this is the pass that we made before I decided to quit and we got rained out two weeks ago, a little over two weeks ago. That pass looks exactly the same. It's just fresh and you can't see that it looks exactly the same as that one. Should have just kept going, I guess. Oh well, it's, so this is like white knuckle combine driving. I compare it to like when you're driving in the snow you get a foot of snow and you're like, can't see the road, no idea where the lines are, no cars have driven in front of you, it's slippery. Same thing, just in the mud with a combine that costs over a half a million dollars, you know, all that stuff. So anyway, we're done here. It is nine o'clock. We are not going anywhere else tonight. I'm gonna see about moving the combine back to the farm. We gotta get fuel and stuff before we go to the next field tomorrow. Um, but we're making good progress. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for watching today. That one was a fun one. It's kind of sarcasm, it's kind of not. Um, anyway, tomorrow we have 90, 95-ish acres to do on uh, a couple of fields that are a little ways away from here, but they're on their way to Berkey. So those are the last of the first crop beans here at Waldron. We're gonna go get them. The fields are gonna be wet. It's gonna be a lot like what we just did, I imagine. Uh, there's, on the one field, there is nowhere to get trucks out and it's on US 127. It's a major road. So we've got to figure that out, but we'll figure it out and get it done. Uh, and we are taking off from there and heading to Berkey and I'm moving tomorrow. So we're going to get it done. Uh, it should take me about five hours to combine the beans and uh, hopefully we can get started 11, 1130 or something and be reasonable. And then we can get to Berkey. Probably won't run anything down there, but if we could get stuff moved, uh, then we can have a big day on Saturday and Sunday probably and get the beans done down there. And that would be that would be nice. We're, we're, we're three days away from being done with beans. Three more days. So thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe buttons for me, please. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow.